My name is Ryan Harris. I am a graduate from OU, School of Art and Art History. I have my Bachelor of Fine Arts in Contemporary Sculpture and Printmaking. Today we're at Odd Fab. It is a metal fabrication shop in downtown Oklahoma City. They do everything from metalwork to woodwork and they basically make a lot of the signs that are sort of around downtown. If you see uh, a lot of the signs in the Plaza District, they've probably made them. The work that I've been doing since I've graduated has all pretty much been um, you know, a lot of stuff that I can sort of afford because being a post-grad art student, you know, you're sort of ripped from having access to all of these materials and all of these professors and studios and everything. And you're just kind of thrown out into, you know, the wild to find a way to make work that you like, but that you can also, you know, have the uh, materials and sort of access to the equipment that you need to be able to make. And that was something that I really struggled with for a long time. Um, I've, I graduated in May of 2014, and ever since then, it's sort of has been an uphill battle to try and find some sort of work that I can make. And that's what kind of got me into making um, the stool. I made it entirely out of scrap wood and just sort of materials that uh, you know were around the shop and I'm really blessed to sort of have access to this shop because I still have access to some of the equipment that I need um, but I don't really have the money to buy the materials and so a lot of the work that I've been making has been um, has sort of had to lend itself to just materials that I can find whether it be trash or scrap wood that's sort of left over from a project and I've really had to sort of broaden my horizons and get um, creative to find solutions to make the stuff that I want to make. It's been a struggle trying to find that motivation and it's certainly hard after graduation, um, you know, to sort of keep yourself to, I guess, a timeline to make work because in school, you know, you have projects that are due by certain dates and so you have something to work towards. And after you graduate, you don't really have due dates unless you have like a show or something. And so it's, I found it really hard to sort of get myself motivated after a long day in the office um, to go and you know, actually make something. I feel like as an artist, you're kind of, I guess you're driven to make work. And if you don't make work, then you kind of go a little crazy. And so, um, that's sort of what has been the major motivation for me to make work has been, you know, this almost physical need to make something. Because if I don't, then I feel like I'm just going stir crazy, just sitting on my ass day after day, not really making any work. So it's been tough, but you, know, you sort of fall into a groove and then you sort of use that groove to get work sort of pumped out. And then maybe something cool, something that you like will come out of that. Being a career artist is certainly the goal. Um, but it's kind of a pipe dream, and I know that's sort of a pessimistic outlook, um, but I feel like it's one that's kind of real, because everybody who does art is obviously trying to be a career artist. I mean, obviously the dream is to, you know, make art that people want to buy, and then be able to just spend all of your time making that art, getting into shows, selling pieces, you know, and all that stuff. I don't really, I don't, I guess, plan on, you know, working 40 hours a week and then just sort of doing art when I can find time and the motivation, that's just sort of where I am right now. Um, a lot of the grad students that I've talked to who've graduated and gone on to be professors or like actual working artists call like this sort of time when you graduate and you're sort of trying to figure out how you can make the art that you want to make post-grad. They call it the post-grad slump and it's just sort of you know, those few years afterward where you're just like trying to find like the ebb and flow to get to where you want to be so you can start making art. I don't plan on, you know, doing this forever. I want to eventually get to a point where, you know, I can start making art and then making a living off of my art. And maybe that's in, you know, having a shop like this or having a print shop where I can, you know, print shirts and home goods and stuff and sort of do that. And that's definitely something that I've considered and something that I'm sort of working towards like my five-year plan, I guess, is to own my own business. Whether that's, you know, some sort of consignment shop um, where I 
make furniture and sell it, or if I have some sort of print shop or something. Um, that's sort of the plan, but for right now, I you know, need to be able to have steady income, and with that income, be able to you know, pursue the five-year goal. The art I was making while I was in college was all about um, sort of the things I was feeling at the time. And at the time I was going through a lot of like anxious and depressive episodes. And so a lot of the work that I was making during that time was all about that. And it was all really dark and really kind of um, sad. But what I found was that, you know, when I was going through through those feelings, I sort of felt like I was always kind of alone. I found that people really responded to it really, really well, and uh, that sort of helped me feel like I wasn't alone um, after all. And so that was a, sort of a really cool, almost out-of-body experience because it allowed me to be able to make something and then put it on the wall and have my only connection with it be um, sort of like my name on the tag, by the piece. I used to be a Christian, and I used to, you know, believe in God and everything, and I used to be straight, quote unquote. I, I sort of learned that, you know, I am an atheist, I don't really believe in any sort of higher power, um, and that I'm gay. And those were two really, really big sort of self-discoveries. And so the work that I made, um, it had to do a lot with gay rights, and it all sort of came from a philosophy that was bred in not necessarily believing in any sort of higher power or any sort of afterlife. A lot of it is, it's really raw and it's really dark, um, but I feel like it was important because I felt like it was really genuine to what I was going through and the things that I actually thought and felt. The work that I'm making now is definitely a lot happier, but I feel like if the work that I made then can help anyone, then you know I feel like it has served its purpose. I want to help anyone that was feeling the same kind of stuff that I was feeling. You know, I want I want it to be able to show the people that feel the most alone that they're not, because uh, that was really the biggest thing with me. And I want people that are going through the same kind of things that I was going through to know that there are other people out there that are going through the exact same stuff um, and that, you know, it does get better and that there is a way out that's not suicide or, you know, anything as drastic as that. Con los terroristas.